All right, now that you have your pencils and paper ready, let's get started. Today we're going to draw the portrait of a clown, and we're going to use the ball, cone, and cylinder forms. Let me show you how simple it is to get started drawing this portrait. Let's use an oval-shaped ball form here to the right of center, slant it so that it has a little action angle. Make that oval-shaped ball form sort of egg-like so that it's slightly wider up above than it is down below. Be sure that it's elongated because most clowns, you know, built up the tops of their heads. As a matter of fact, if you look closely, you can often see that little line where they've added a skull cap of some kind. Well, now let's see. Let's use another ball form here for his big bulbous nose. Sometimes they'll put a red rubber ball on there, or sometimes they'll even use a light bulb. And then the cone form of his hat, standing there at a jaunty angle. Now let's put in that big ruffled collar, the type that's worn by Pagliaccio. Today's clown is going to be a white face, Pierrot type of clown. And put that collar in as a large ellipse. You know an ellipse is a circle lying down. And now let's make the lines of the ruffles come out uh, as if they came from a focal point like that, like the spokes of a wheel. Just draw them in like that, making them radiate from that point. Shooting out, all radiating from that one center. And you see, in order to get perspective in it, as they go toward the back edge of that ellipse, they get a little closer together. All right, now let's draw the edges of the accordion pleated type of uh, ruffled collar. Bringing those lines down, of course, here in the foreground, you're going to see them as notches like this, so that there are little valleys in between the ridges. Next, you could use your eraser to get rid of that uh, sketchy line that you put around there to lay out the perspective on the uh, ellipse that was lying down. Now, let's see, I think perhaps the next thing to do is to put in a little brim on his cap like this. Suggest his eyes as half circles. Put them in rather boldly because you know the clowns are always painted around their eyes. And big eyebrows that arch like this. And the mouth, you know, the actual mouth of a clown is about that big, but you know they paint their mouths, but we'll extend that mouth in just a moment. First, let's uh, give a little form to the ball form of the egg. Assuming that it's lighted straight from the front, it would be shaded down the sides like this. So softly blend with your fingertip, a paper stomp, or a piece of cleansing tissue so that you get the bulged effect of the round form of the egg. Then, also for the nose, leaving a highlight in the middle, shade it around the edges. Let's shade it even darker so that we get the effect of a real ball form. Now for the hat. Let's put a little tone on that hat. Just make it a flat gray tone. Put the brim in, in gray also. Yes, this clown is faced a little bit three quarters this way. <clears throat> you'd probably see a little of his ear over there, but you'd see quite a bit of his ear on this side. Show the brim, the rim, and darken. Let's darken this edge of his face a little bit, too. Darken the edge under here. And we can darken his hair. You know, most of those clowns wear wigs that sort of flare up. You can just make some strokes sweep up like that. <clears throat> sort of big red... Uh, fluffy hair shooting out as if he's sort of frightened or scared most of the time. Yeah, you know, clowns are really uh, an interesting group of people. Clowns aren't always as happy as they look, of course. You've heard the story of the clown who was always sad, but he always painted that big smile on his mouth. Let's make his big smile painted clear out beyond the corners and extend the corners a little bit like that. And now for that large red mouth that he paints over the whole thing. Let's just use some gray tone in there, putting your pencil or crayon on the side, and work in around the line of the mouth that you've already established. Let's darken it a little more in here. And then put a real outline around the entire area that you've just drawn. 
smudge it a bit, make it a little larger at the corners like that. And now a little edging on the ruffle. Bring those lines down so that you get a sort of a border on this accordion pleated collar. Now in order to make valleys down inside of these ruffles so that you get the effect of ridges and valleys, lay your crayon or pencil on its side and just stroke up like that, stroking up toward the center, but let it come light around the center. Softly blend the ends of those strokes. Well, our clown's starting to take on some life there, isn't he? Oh yes, why not put in a few polka dots up on his hat? Well, so far we've used the ball and cone form. But in just a moment, we're going to add a few touches, uh, such as his arm and hand, and we'll have him doing a silly little stunt of some kind. But uh, in a moment, when we make this come alive, you're going to get some interest in that clown besides his face. But first, I'd like to tell you something of interest to everyone who likes to draw and paint. All right, let's get back to our drawing and add those interesting touches It'll give our clown a little something to do here. Let's draw a hand by starting with a circle. Add the wrist as a cylinder form coming down here. Put a sleeve around that cylinder. You see a sleeve is another cylinder. Of course, you want to erase that line as it disappears into the sleeve. And of course, the arm from here to the shoulder is another cylinder. And let's just show the edge of his body and his shoulder over there. Now his fingers too are cylinders. And let's curve them a little bit, as if he has a big, thick glove on, so we'll round them at the fingertips. Carry them around like that, and uh, put in the edge of the hand. Let's put a glove on his hand here. Make his thumb, and the fleshy part of the thumb. And then curve that thumb out like this. He's going to be holding something between his forefinger and his thumb. Right like that. In other words, he's attracting your attention. Now let's put a little shading on the sides of these cylinder forms, just to give them some depth. Let's darken the palm of the hand. You see, when you darken an area, it makes it indent and go in. So darken around the edge here, too, so that you round off the forms. Put some tone on the wrist and on the sleeve here, up to the shoulder. And underneath this collar, and a little tone over here. Yes, let's put a little ruffled uh, cuff here, giving it a little of that zigzag effect. Might suggest a button, too. And now we can get rid of our construction lines, such as these lines here that we used uh, in drawing the circle in order to create the palm of the hand originally. And as you work uh, after the program is over, you can touch up, filling in little edges that you didn't quite get as we draw. You know, the best suggestion, of course, is to put down what you can during the program and then redraw the picture after the program is over because that's when you get your very best results. Now here I'm putting a little shading under the edge of these uh, little uh, cuffs, cuff-like uh, ridges, you know. And let's put some polka dots on his suit. Draw those as circles. Let's fill these in so that they're black. That's the idea. Well, now let's see. A few little touches here and there. And, uh, oh, we don't want to forget those sparkly lines that go through the clown's eyes. You know, they give him a sort of a starry-eyed look. Each clown, of course, is quite an artist himself. Some of those clowns paint and draw, too. But they have to be sort of artistic in order to create their own original clown makeup. No two clowns in the profession ever uh, copy each other exactly. They all create their own type of costume. Some of them have two or three different types of costume. Now let's draw another ellipse here like this and make a cone out of it. Darken it up inside and put some lines on it and we'll make a little tiny umbrella 
out of this for the clowns. So he's got a silly little parasol that wouldn't even shed a drop of water. Well, let's put the frame on it because I think that's about all we have time for. And again, I'd like to remind you of something that will interest every one of you who likes to draw and paint. 